Hey everybody, it's Alan Brockstein coming to you from Houston, Texas this morning. This was my first week of being publicly available at Seeking Alpha with 420 Investor. And uh, if you're listening to this, I know you're interested in cannabis stocks and I think that's a great place for people who want to learn more about cannabis stocks. I've been doing it since 2013, almost 10 years now. And uh, I did switch to Seeking Alpha from Bad Zynga. And I could say a lot of nasty things about Bad Zynga, but I won't because they'll sue me. Um, but I am very happy with the service I'm providing at Seeking Alpha. I'm a big fan of Seeking Alpha where I've been a contributor since 2007. And I actually have a large following. I write only about cannabis stocks now. And since I left Badzinga, I've been writing there every week and building my audience further. And uh, I have to say, as a person 100% focused professionally on the cannabis sector, cannabis stocks suck right now. I'm sure this isn't news to you. No, I'm not here to tell you they will go up because they're cheap. They will go up because they're good. I do think they're cheap and some of them are good. But no, that doesn't mean they're going to go up. Now, I am offering my service. I have to say, if you're a short-term trader, no, step away. It's just not the right time. Uh, I am very fair in my advice. I don't ever say short this stock. Although, I've written publicly about canopy growth very negatively. And if you are that type of person, you can use my research that I share at 420 Investor to find out what to short, although that's not what I'm trying to accomplish, getting people to short names. Um, I think that um, my first week back, God was looking out for me for the last few months. I was planning to stay at Seeking, I mean, at Badzinga while being at Seeking Alpha if they would get rid of a non-compete, which was kind of bogus, the non-compete. But I uh, didn't go publicly live until this week because of that six-month non-compete. And I thought God was protecting me by keeping cannabis stocks down, not making them attractive to new people until I launched. Now, uh, we'll talk more about the market. It was up this week and up more than the S&P 500. But I don't think this was God's rapid start that I envisioned or had hoped for. So no, if you are a regular person and you're not a stock trader, but you want to know when is a good time to invest in cannabis stocks and you don't mind paying for something that you don't necessarily need right now, but you want to be front row for when this 10-year-plus veteran of the cannabis market sees the good stuff. I'm not seeing it right now, honestly. Um, and I explain this to my subscribers all the time. Um, I'm not predicting that prices are going to go down, but I'm not ruling it out. And more importantly, I'm not making the case, you must buy cannabis stocks now because I understand it. It's a two-sided story. All right. With that uh, four-minute intro, let me now say that uh, the only uh, cannabis sector news this week that was important, I think, was the Canadian cannabis sales were released for March, which is kind of late. Uh, it's just the way Canada works on that data. And um, they increased, I think, 0.6% on a per day basis. Because remember, February 28 days, March 31. But they were up more importantly, 12.9% from a year ago. And that was a little bit better than the 12.4% last month. But these aren't really good numbers, honestly. And uh, I think the Canadian market remains somewhat troubled. Something that I explained to, you know, if you care about those details, I do explain that to my subscribers. Uh, this week, I wrote uh, two pieces on Seeking Alpha. Uh, one most importantly for you, 
Organogram is the best cannabis stock. And I strictly follow this rule. Don't get pigeonholed into one part of the market. Be as broad as one can be. And I like Organogram a lot. There are three Canadian LPs that fall into the camp. And actually, there are more, but I don't focus on them. But I would throw uh, Aurora and Sundial in there as well. Or SNDL is what it's called now. But the three that I've publicly spoken about besides Organogram, the other two would be uh, Kronos Group and Village Farms. These stocks are so cheap in my view. And Organogram, which I'm talking about now, and wrote up in that article, stands out. They're doing well in Canada and uh, they have a lot of cash, no debt, and a 20% stake held by British American Tobacco. And uh, I like it a lot, I wrote about it. The other article that I wrote for Seeking Alpha is uh, a launch piece, because I went live. Launching 420 Investor, stay on top of cannabis stocks. And uh, I linked both of those in the piece that I have linked in the summary to this. Uh, and it's the basis of this video. Um, I follow 28 names closely. And this week, there was a lot of news as we kind of wrapped up earnings season. Uh, so Air came out with revenue that was a little bit shy of expectations, but they hit the adjusted EBITDA that was expected. And the stock soared. I don't own any Air any longer. Um, so... Um, I think the stock is cheap, and I will explain that to any of my subscribers. I have explained it, and if you subscribe to my service at Seeking Alpha 420 Investor, you'll learn why right now I don't own any, and I did share the price where I do care. The next one is Columbia Care. That is my favorite MSO. Is it my the one I think is the best MSO? No, no, uh, not at all. I don't think they're the best, but they have a deal with Cresco, is it is a deal definitely gonna close? No, probably yes. At the price that they've uh, agreed to do, probably not, but at a higher price than now. And so they reported uh, this week uh, with uh, revenue of 125 million, only up 1% from a year ago. CEA, uh, which I've written about, talked about publicly, really cheap. I don't own any more of that either. Um, they reported um, a huge Q1, and the company ate into their backlog for money. You know, they'd already, deferred revenue went down a lot, and revenue was up. They just filled their prior commitments, and uh, uh, so that was that. Uh, Cure Leaf, which I think is still one of the most popular MSOs, kind of bounced uh, on this report. Now, going into the report, remember, they were really late to release their Q4, and uh, the, the analysts took their numbers way down, and, oh, they beat the expectations. Well, the revenue fell 2% sequentially in Q1 from Q4, but it was 1% better than expected. Woo! No. And... Uh, so I, when I look at Cureleaf, which I explain to my subscribers what I'm seeing, I don't see a good valuation. It's okay, but there are much better choices, in my opinion. And then Green Lane, which I think is really cheap, uh, but it's not in the index, uh, reported a sequential gain of revenue of 9% and profitability improved too. So I, I think that company's moving in the right direction but there's some reasons to be careful. Uh, Grogen announced a, a partnership with Grow Life. And if you've been following the industry for a long time, like I have, you'll know that Grow Life are scumbags. And uh, that was a, a, a can of scam. It got suspended in 2014. Some would argue that, that wasn't right, but whatever. I would just tell you, looking at this company, Canna scam and Grogen did a deal with them, and that's bad if you ask me. But worse, it's not even a cannabis deal. Uh, Grow Life has an investment in a company 
or owns, controls a company that does mushrooms. And Grojan got into the mushroom business. I'm very concerned. All right. The next one is Planet 13, one of my favorite companies. I've written about it three times this year, or actually since December, at Seeking Alpha. And it made a new 52-week low, not an all-time low. And I like it a lot. You can just read any of the things I've written. They reported a revenue of $25 million, 24.9 to be exact, that was in line with expectations. But um, I think the stock's biggest problem is that it was still up year to date when cannabis stocks are down 17% as of Friday. And I think that's the big problem. Is that the end of the world? No. Uh, so a, a little company that I follow is SHF uh, Holdings. It used to be known as Safe Harbor Financial. That's who they can uh, run. And they reported a Q1 revenue in excess of $4 million, up 150% from a year ago on mergers, but uh, they also inked a deal with an unknown large MSO for 5.5 million in real estate loans. So I don't think this is a easy to assess situation, but I will tell you that this company was headed for doom, but they fixed the problem with their founder, um, partner Colorado Credit Union. Um, the next one is True Leave, and this isn't important, but they opened their 20th Pennsylvania dispensary. Uh, Tilt Holdings reported a Q1 of $42 million in revenue in a break-even adjusted EBITDA. And they, but they also borrowed $4.5 million at an outrageously high value. I liked the CEO who's gone, Gary Santo. And I, I've talked about him before. He's a former IR guy, red flag, right? But I liked him, and he was doing a good job, but he's gone. And uh, I'm not going to say what I say to my subscribers about Tilt, but I used to like them. Terrison opened their fifth cookie store in Michigan, and they introduced Wana branded products in New Jersey, and they also unveiled the Legend brand in Michigan. And then finally, Verano opened its 67th floor dispensary. Okay, that was a long time. We're already 13 minutes into this. Uh, let me tell you quickly about the market. Like I said earlier, it was up this week, 1.7%, although it pulled back on Friday. And um, the index uh, is down 17% year to date. And the S&P 500 is up. 9.2%. That's a huge difference. And I know that excites a lot of people. I'm very negative about the overall stock market. I know that you're not listening to this for me to share my views and the why, but I will admit I'm very negative on stocks now. And generally, I don't think this really matters for cannabis stocks, but cannabis stocks are in a big bad bear market despite the S&P 500 rallying off the lows. The NASDAQ 100 made a 52-week high this week. I'm more negative about that. And um, I'm concerned that if I'm right, there's a lot of problems. One of them is the cannabis market may have trouble, more trouble. It's already in trouble. All right. So I run two model portfolios. I launched both of these uh, at the end of the year. The first one is beat the global cannabis stock index model portfolio. Do you know what I'm trying to do there? It's kind of self-explanatory. That replicates, I had two models at Badzinga that I, I always, not every day, but every quarter, every year, and over time, I did better than the model, and, than the index. And what that means is I go down less when the market's going down, which was the case in 21 and 22, and I go up more when the market's going up. That's my goal, that's what I do. But I will tell you, at a time like early 2014, when everything's exploding, I can't keep up. And, uh, and when everything's imploding, it's hard for me to do better 
because people are just selling every stock. But over time, I do better. And this week, no, I didn't do better. Uh, I was up 0.8% this week. Uh, and that, that was worth, oh, I think I had a typo. The uh, index was up 2.5% this week. Um, so yeah, I lagged this week. Year to date, I'm doing a little bit better than the index. I'm down 16.3% and uh, that's down 17%. I think the way I would describe that is I had a great Q1, but not such a good Q2 so far. And the other model portfolio is called Beat the American Cannabis Operator Index. That's a newly created one. And I know a lot of you, a lot of people out there, they care only about MSOs. MSOs are everything. MSOS is everything, the ETF. I don't think that's the right answer, by the way. And um, I think over time, I will do better. But um, year to date, I'm down huge. Uh, I can explain why if you care. But uh, I'm down 23.7% year to date. And that's better than MSOS. My secondary goal is to beat that, but not by much. That's down, if you can believe it, 23.8%. I've been very negative on that one. You can read my articles if you care why. And the index, though, is down only 12.6%. So I'm not doing a good job on that. All right, let me finish this up with a quick calendar. Like I said, we're kind of through earnings season. For any company that's uh, trying to comply with the SEC or the TSX, um, not the CSC or the TSX or NEO, they needed to have gotten their reports already done. These remaining companies um, are either late or they're CSE listed or just OTC or, uh, or they're not SEC filers. There's one important company reporting next week. But on Tuesday, two Canadian LPs that are small, Delivera and Rubicon report. On Wednesday, Cresco Labs reports, they are GAP compliant, but they don't, they don't file with the SEC. They file with CDAR still, I think. Um, maybe they're late, I don't know. Um, that's the important one, Cresco Labs. And Slang Worldwide reports on Wednesday also. And then on Thursday, uh, OTC, CSE company, Vexed reports. That's it. And uh, I have a, a summary and a lot of information in that. And I'll be back next week. Y'all take care.